Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, thanks for clicking on my video. So today I'm doing a full face of drugstore makeup. I came up with this look, which I think is absolutely gorgeous for fall. Right now we're in the winter, coming into the spring. I think by the time this video goes up, I'm gonna try to get it up early enough so it's time appropriate, but I love a good smoky eye. This is my take on like the latte, espresso, whatever kind of coffee you want to call it. Look that they had trending months ago that I never filmed. Y'all know how life happens, but I love how this look turned out and I got it using all drugstore products. So before we get into the video, if you're new, I would love to have you join the family. So please hit that subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you know every time I upload. I do lots of makeup, lots of hauls, hair, nails, reviews, tutorials, a lot of content related to beauty with a little bit of fitness sprinkled in. So if you're into that, you're going to love this channel. I won't keep you waiting any longer. If you want to see how I got this look, what products I used and how I put it all together, stay tuned and keep on watching. All right, so let's jump right in. You guys asked me to do a drugstore get ready with me first impressions with all the stuff I've been hauling lately. So we're doing that today. I'm going to start with the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. I don't know why I've never had this before. And honestly, I don't remember. I think I did an e.l.f. haul. I don't know, but I know this is a cult favorite. Everybody says it is just like the Milk Hydro Grip which I believe I have or had a small one in my collection. I'm sorry if y'all can hear that dog barking outside. Mm, I'm not even gonna get started. But I figured today I'm just gonna get ready, do a quick first impressions. I don't want this video to be terribly long because I really just want you guys to see. It's like I said, a lot of this stuff isn't new, so it's more just my first impressions. All right, so that definitely feels tacky. I'm trying to remember if I've ever had the Hydro Grip. I think I had a small one of it a long time ago. But anyway, for foundation today, we're gonna do the NYX Bear With Me Blur. I know this has been out for a while and I think I was just worried about the shade range. So I never tried it, but then I was able to go into an Ulta and they had um, displays out with testers. So that definitely helped. I feel like these tend to pull, these meaning NYX foundations tend to pull a little too, well, let's start with this and see, a little too, um, I don't know. I feel like they used to pull like a little too yellow golden on me, but we'll see. I have like no tan right now. I am so pale, but I plan on trying to take a little vacation in March early in the month for my birthday just to have some time to get away so looking forward to that for sure but this is what it looks like i'd say the coverage is a nice medium i don't know if i feel like it's blurring anything per se but i definitely feel like it's helping to even everything out I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit more just on my trouble areas. I never really feel like I need a lot on my forehead, so I don't tend to put it there. And I honestly don't need much on my cheeks because by the time I put my concealer and all that, it all ends up giving me more coverage. So it's mainly just this lower area, but so far I think this looks really pretty. You can see my dark spots a little there. So if you want something that has a good medium coverage, like this is what I would wear to the gym. So not sure about staying power, but so far I think the application and the color match, this is in the shade 18 Nutmeg. I think this is pretty good. For concealer, I have this Flower Light Illusion Full Coverage Concealer. I have not been gravitating towards drugstore concealers because I have so many high-end concealers that I love right now. And it's not to say that the drugstore ones aren't good by any means because they are. I think I've just been trying to use what I have open and honestly some of them I'm in love with so <laughs> I've just been using them. But this says full coverage. It says crease proof. 
and it says weightless formula for a second skin feel so we will see I got the shade M5 D1 which is medium deep so this is what it looks like it does look like it'll be a little light not too bad I hope do I want to color yeah let's do a little tiny bit use too much of this because she gets super orange this is the um, black radiance orange color corrector I just feel like with as bright as this concealer is I don't want it to make my eyes look too crazy so let's see how this applies Find my concealer brush yeah that shade is whoa that is very light I've gotten away from loving super light concealers under my eyes anymore because I started noticing that it makes everything look more gray, like it kind of looks ashy. Um, so I'll do a darker one first and then I'll go in with a lighter one if I need a little more brightness. So the darker one is a little bit lighter than my skin tone. but. I know I can make this work. It's just the initial is like, whoo, that's brighter than I've done in a really long time. Y'all comment below and let me know if you've tried any of these products I've mentioned so far. I know we're just getting into the video, but like keep that in mind going forward. Because like I said, some of this stuff is not new. Some of it is cult favorites that I know people love already. So I'm just curious if it's stuff that y'all love already or y'all want to tell me I could have just saved my money. That looks so bright. That's not bad though. I just, I never trust a concealer that says it does not crease. I just, I don't believe it. I've never seen it to be true. I set everything. I want to put a little bit more concealer, but I want something darker. So let me get something else. All right, I'm going to go in with this Maybelline Superstay. This is their active wear, 30 hour wear, up to 30 hour wear. I'll never find out, but yeah, that's better. I should have did this one first. This one isn't something that I've hauled recently, but it's definitely still new. I think I only did a get ready with me one time wearing it and then I know I'm so bad and then I stuck it in the drawer yeah I don't mind it being that light on my nose and maybe my forehead because the time by the time I put powder and all that stuff like it's gonna darken up a little bit but the under eyes can be tricky especially because I have hollows if you put something that's too light it's just gonna make all that stuff stand out even more and I used to think like, oh, I need more, I need lighter, and I need to pile it on and extra powder. And it was just drawing more attention to it more than it was actually concealing anything. So I like how that looks better. And then I'm going to set this immediately. I'm a little nervous about this powder because I remember swatching it. Juvia's Place. This is the I Am Magic Setting Powder in Sahara. Sahara. Um... I remember swatching this and being like, whoa, this is going to be Flashback City. Thank God I'm not using a flash, but I just remember it being like super light. And that's my fault. I didn't want a yellow, so I always get a beige, but this is like, she's light. So let's see if I can manage to set this. I always do just a light dusting on a brush first, and then I press it in. Yeah, that's what I thought was going to happen. Like you put this down and it is powder. It's not a translucent powder. It is a setting powder that has coverage and color. So I'm going to put this just a little bit to make sure my under eyes don't crease, but I am not going to use a lot of it. And then if I need more later after I put my face powder and everything, then I'll come back and add some. But for my forehead, with these wrinkles, see this is why I like to use something that has blurring and feel and filling versus just gripping. But I'm gonna smooth out these wrinkles, smooth out the foundation, 
put the concealer, try not to wrinkle my forehead too much, and then set it so that everything does not settle into my lines as I just wrinkle my eyebrows. I didn't realize how much I talk so expressive with my face. I'm just gonna keep this concentrated in the middle and kind of try to blend out the edges. And that looks much smoother already. So we're gonna hurry up and set her before the wrinkles set in. And I'm gonna use my Beauty Blender Puff because I really wanna get this pressed in so that it does not move around anymore. I've been in the house so much lately between just like recovering from my surgeries and just not having a lot to do that I haven't been really wearing a lot of makeup. And when I do, it's literally like the same look every single time, not doing a lot, just Foundation, concealer, bronzer, bronzer in my crease, not even wearing eyeshadow. Like, who am I? So I almost feel a little rusty today. Like, I really had trouble picking out the makeup I was going to use. So we're going to leave that for right now. I have to show you all this because I remember I almost decluttered this. And now I, use, I literally wear it every single day. Elf putty bronzer. I am making a dent in her. I love the shade of this. This is in the shade. Where is it? Oh, on the side. Sunkissed. I love this one because it's this brush. So this is an e.l.f. brush and this is their 104. Yeah, 104. I don't remember where I got this from, but as you can see, it is perfect for contouring. So just lightly tapping it into the hollows of my cheeks and just put my brush in it, get a little bit on there. This is very emollient, but it's not too dark. I just go in light handed, put a little bit on this side, put a little bit on this side. And I like to just pat it in because I have issues with patches on my cheeks every single time I do makeup. So I pat it in, but like this blends out so well and it looks so good. And I, I have to say it's because of this brush because I was about to get rid of it. So this is one of my favorites. Like this is literally every single day for me, I wear this. And of course, if I wanted to, I could build it up. I do run it down the sides of my nose as well to help set my nose contour or help to define it more. I run it along my jawline just to help kind of chisel that a little bit more, slim that down. Absolutely love this. It's the color and the formula lasts. It stays where I put it. Like I have no complaints about this one. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to set my face. I have this CoverGirl Simply Ageless Instant Wrinkle Blurring Pressed Powder. I don't remember if I used this or not. This, sh yeah, this shade should be okay. Um, I want something a little lighter just to go around the edges before I set, before I set my powder, before I set my bronzer. This looks really light and kind of... What shade is this, Lord? I don't know how I feel about it, but let's see. I definitely want the blurring on my forehead. I can't really tell color-wise what this is doing for my face. Can y'all see a difference? I know swatching it on my hand, it looks gray, but we're just going to... This isn't, what shade is this? Cause it, tawny. I feel like it looks okay, but I just, I can't really tell coverage wise. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. I don't think I like the shade. So I'm not sure if I'm keeping that. So I don't have a new powder bronzer, but I have this Juvia's Place cream bronzer. I got mine in the shade Amber. I really want to try this and I know I'm going to put a little bit anyway. I'm going to go in with a different brush though so I can diffuse it a little more. I love the packaging on this. It reminds me of the 
Say Beauty one, I think, is where my brain is going. But all I've done is swatch this. And you can see it is darker. So we're just going to see what happens. I always start on my forehead because I feel like I can get away with messing that up versus messing up my cheeks. Yeah, that definitely, ooh, is darker and has some more warmth to it. Does this dry down to a powder? I hope. Huh? Radiant finish. Hmm, and it also says that it has shimmering pearls that delicately reflect light, unveiling a mesmerizing luminosity. Okay, well, I just set my face with powder, and now we're going back over it with another cream, but... I'm hoping that this will just help everything melt together, but I love the shade of this. I do feel like I'm having to be a little more light handed because it is darker, but it's definitely giving more of the color that I want for a bronzer than a contour. I love how that looks. And I do see a little bit of luminosity but it doesn't feel like it's on my face and it looks wet to me. So this is definitely a winner. So for blush, I have the same blush because I really just wanted to use this blush, but I feel like I've used it on camera. Do I have something new? I was gonna use my Juvia's Place blushes, but I know I've used this. I just, I'm excited because I have three colors. I have Lily Love, Perky Poppy, and Coral Rose, but I know I've used these before. So let me use something new. I have the NYX Wonder Stick. This is their dual ended cream blush stick. I do not think I've used this yet. It's not open, so clearly, I, oh, it is open. I know, I was like, normally I swatch stuff. Come on, Barbara. Um, so this has two different shades on it. One is called Bright Amber and the other is Fuchsia. So you're basically getting two products in one. What are we doing today? We're going to do bright amber. I don't know if I should. I'm going to put this on my hand and see how easy it blends out. I'm going to swipe it on my brush because I don't trust it. Oh, a lot came off. Okay, let's take our time. Because so far I'm liking this and I don't want to mess it up. Oh, it's on the brush, but it's not like super crazy. All right, we can do this. I feel like for as much that came off, we're glutton for punishment. It's a dry formula. So if you don't like super wet blushes and you feel kind of intimidated by them, this is definitely drier. But it's blending out well and I don't feel like it's picking up my makeup. That blended out really well. And I don't see any disturbing of my makeup underneath. So yeah, I think that looks good. I do feel like it takes some work because it's a drier formula, but I don't mind that. Sometimes if you're just starting off in a cream liquid situation, you don't want to go straight in with the dots that tend to be super pigmented. So this is a great alternative. I have a new ColourPop highlighter. I have not had one of these. I haven't bought one in a long time. Like I have one, did I declutter it? I was holding on to it for nostalgia, but I was like, Barbara, it's time. This is in Wisp, I believe is the shade name. Yes, so we all know and love these. They are like a cream formula. I like the shade of this. It's kind of cool toned. I'm going to try to see if I can get this on my brush, which it looks like I can. Yes, you can. That is so pretty. I've always loved these and I just get so caught up in the hype of like new drugstore makeup and then there's a sale. So I have a coupon and I have to shop. But if you don't want something that's like super, super blinding, go in with a brush. But you can also just put it on your finger and tap 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 and now you have a lot more highlighter Woo. okay but it also blends out super easy so that's why i've always had a love affair with these 
like I said, I just get caught up in the new stuff and feel like I need to have that. And then you forget about old stuff that you love, but that blends out so easy. Tapped it with my finger, still blended out, went in with a brush. For eyeshadow, I have to use this palette. I hope this counts as drugstore. I did find it at Marshall's, but I feel like for the price, even the regular price, these are not expensive. I paid $6.99 for it. It's the Zoeva Together We Grow palette. I saw this and thought it was just such a pretty nude palette, and I have never tried this brand. So it very much so reminds me of Lorelei Los Angeles, her packaging. Um, <laughs> but I just want to do kind of like a brown smoky eye, but I also have this ColourPop Jelly Much eyeshadow in Shiny Penny that I think I'm going to use too. So I'm just going to throw together a quick little look. I'm going to go in with, get this mirror out of the way, Imagination. And let's see how that looks in the crease. Oh yeah, y'all. Have y'all tried Zoeva eyeshadows before? Because it's a little powdery, but I don't mind that as long as the pigment's still there. And I just dipped my brush in this one time and this is what we're getting. So I can do powdery if the quality is there. And I think I kind of want to do a smoky eye. So I'm going to start with this shade further towards my crease and then go darker towards my lash line. I'm gonna go in with Perseverance, which is this shade here, and see, I'm gonna use the same brush and just see how much darker. Oh yeah. See, I love this. These colors, like sometimes y'all know how companies will make an eyeshadow palette and like all the colors look almost like the same shade. This is definitely darker, a little bit cooler. No question, it is a different shade and it's helping to give some more dimension. I hate when it's like a 10 pan or a 8 pan or a 6 pan, whatever, but like a smaller palette. I don't like it in bigger palettes either, to be honest, but when they make the shades too similar, it's like you couldn't do something else. Like, I get if you're trying to stay with a color story, but don't make it too redundant and then it's just taking up space. All right, so I'm gonna take this shade. I feel like that's gonna, let's see what Determination does. I don't know if this is gonna come across darker or just gray. It's just, oh. Uh, so I want some more definition along the lash line, but I can't tell. I'm gonna go in with a liner. I think it just looks gray. But I like that this palette has cool tone and warm tone options. It's kind of giving me a smaller version of Natasha Denona Glam, maybe? Do y'all see it? Am I tripping? I don't know, but I think we're just going to go with this. And then I'm going to darken up my lash line with an eyeliner. I do really want to try that shiny penny shade let's just see because i remember swatching it and it's kind of duo chromey but it has some green in it and i wasn't really wanting green but i mean y'all know that is one of my favorite eyeshadow shades so are you supposed to apply this with your finger i don't know oh i just think this is gonna be so gorgeous it's just gonna give me like a nice little i was supposed to be doing a brown smoky eye I was debating if I want to use this, but I put a little bit on my hand and I feel like, can you even see that? Barely. I don't think it's going to be too much color. Do you, are you supposed to use a brush with this? Okay, that's a lie. <laughs> that was not the intention of today's look, but we are here, so we're just going to go with it. I just wanted to give it a little wash of sparkle, but I did not think the copper, the green was gonna show that much. I thought it was gonna be more of a copper. That is so pretty though, oh my goodness. I don't know if this is the best brush to use this with because I feel like it's going on a little patchy, but 
it's working its way into the skin and blending out that is so pretty it's just it looks so cool like it literally looks like it don't look like a penny to me i don't know what it looks like but it's one of those like blue brown kind of shades with a little bit of green if that makes sense probably not but <laughs> you get what i'm saying i like this palette it is a very nice affordable like i didn't even get into the shimmers yet and you know shimmers are usually what sell a palette for me because i'm just like yeah matte to matte i know a lot of people weight their experiences on how the mattes perform but i feel like you can get away with if you're careful and you know how to take your time and blend you can make mattes work but i'm just gonna finish up my lower lash line with perseverance and imagination the two main shades the brown shades that i put on and then put on some eyeliner so the only black drugstore eyeliner that i have and i'm not even sure this is black to be honest uh, because you can't see it on the wrapper once you tear it but this is by LA girl I think it's a dark brown I'm pretty sure it is so I'm just going to put this along my lash line and try to smoke it out if she cooperates because she is pretty old I don't want this to be pretty messy so this is still working really well considering how long I've had it. Okay, for brows, I do have, I think I've had this for a while though. This is the, oh, I got a few brow products in here. Hold on a second. Oh, I remember this. Okay, I'm gonna use this again because I haven't used it in a while and I'm gonna do one brow on camera. So this is the L'Oreal Micro Ink Pen by Brow Stylist. This is not new. I have not bought any new brow products. I am happy with the brow products that I have, so I don't feel like I need to get new drugstore ones. But this is one of the ones that has the little pointy tip with the triangle that you're supposed to be able to do hair-like strokes. This one is in the shade Dark Brunette. I've actually been wearing my brows pretty bushy, but I've done that on days when I'm doing like no makeup makeup looks. It's not my norm for if I'm doing a full face of makeup. So that's it for my brows. So I'm gonna do the other one off camera. And do I have a mascara? I do, I think. I'll check. <laughs> if not, I'll do that off camera and put my lashes on and then we'll come back and do lips. All right, mascara, I was not gonna show cause I was like, mm, I don't have nothing new, but I just remembered why I love this. Maybelline Sky High. This is a small one, but I know I have a full size one. This was just sitting in my bin. I just put one coat of these of this on my lashes and I was just like, whoa, if something can go on my lashes and I feel like it makes them look fuller and add some length and some drama when I have eye makeup on, it is a good one. So yeah. I remember why I love this one when it first came out and this just reminded me. So I was not going to show this, but I feel like I have to because I've been kind of stuck on tubing mascara and I'm not going to lie. It's been because the ease of being able to take them off, but sometimes there is a regular mascara that just wows me and I feel like I need to wear this more often and this is one of them. Absolutely. Yeah, she's a keeper. Okay, I already lined my lashes. I kind of cheated. I did the Velour 3-in-1 Lash and Go. This is the magnetic liner, and you can also use it as a lash adhesive. I was going to do regular lashes, but I decided to go with an oldie but a goodie, the Kiss Tempt Lashes. These were my favorite magnetic lashes when they first came out, and these were the only ones I could get to work for me for a little while. And I just found these in my drawer and was like, oh yeah, I remember and I love these. So let's see if they'll work since they're an older pair. <laughs> Probably setting myself up for failure. But the fact that this is just, does this work? Oh yes, it does. Thank you, baby Jesus. Y'all know my struggle with lashes sometimes. That is on there. But I think those are perfect for this look. Not too big, not taken away from the eyeshadow look. 
Yeah, it's stuck on the outside. It's just the insides aren't sticking. I'll get it right. Come back, finish lips. And that's the end of the video. So for lips, all time favorite. Y'all know I could pick Juvie's Place every single time. That is always one of my favorites. But I wanted to remind y'all about these other two. Minted has their night lip pencil, which is a gorgeous brown. And then Milani has rich cocoa. So I'm gonna swatch them both. This is Milani right here. Look at that. Perfect chocolate brown. And then this is minted, which is a tad bit lighter. I think I wanna go with the darker one. So let's go with Milani. I'm filling in a little bit more with this one because I think I'm just gonna go in with a gloss. All right, for lips, the colors I have, of course they're pinkish. This is not drugstore. Is this drugstore? It's about face drugstore because it's on the Ulta drugstore side. I kind of want to use this one because I feel like it matches. Okay, we have this L'Oreal lip color. What kind of lip color? Rose Harmony. I don't know which lip color this is. This might work. Let's see. No, that's not what I wanted either. But we're gonna put it first and then put something on top. It works because the brown lip liner was so, it filled in so much. But I was going for more of a nude. I know I have a gloss. This is the Milani Nourishing Lip Plumper and she is super light. So we're gonna put that on top just to help lighten this up a little bit. There we go. Ooh, that's milky. I wanted a shade like this in my collection go, and I think this looks perfect. Is this giving latte vibes? Is this giving espresso vibes? I don't know, but I think it's cute. That is it for the look, guys. This is the final face, and I'm kind of feeling it. I feel like if I take my time and I blend, I can get any drugstore makeup look to look as good as a high-end look. And if you set your face properly, you use your setting spray, all that stuff, you can get it to last. So you don't have to spend a lot of money on makeup. I just like to. <laughs> Comment, let me know what you think. Are you a drugstore person? Are you a high-end person? Do you have a little bit of both? What's your preference? Tell me what you think about the look. Would you wear this? It was pretty easy. So if you wanna recreate it, let me know if you plan to down below. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. If you like it, think somebody else can get some use out of it, share it with your friends. And I hope you decided to join the family by hitting that subscribe button. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.